Hey, what's up? I'm Mike Squires, and this is the Couchress Podcast, isn't it? Hey, uh, episode 91. Man, I'm closing in on 100. I should Maybe I should plan something super cool for episode 100, if only I was good at planning. <laughs> uh, my guest on this episode is Bob Balch of Fu Manchu, who uh, is a super cool guy. I met him years ago. Just briefly, um, when Loaded played some shows, two shows, one in Seattle, one in Portland with Fu Manchu. It was like 2001, um, I think, 2000, 2001, must have been. And, um, you know, I've seen the band a number of times. They're great. He's fucking great. And, you know, he for people who are not familiar with Bob or who are only familiar with Fu Manchu's output... Um, you know, he is a, a sophisticated guitar player beyond the, uh, the seemingly unsophisticated approach of Fu Manchu, which is like a, it's a groovy affair, but it's, there's not a lot of jazz going on there, but my man is a, is a killer guitar player. And he, um, you know, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, maybe more, he, t- he told me in the episode, you know me. I'm I'm not big fact checker. He um, launched a thing called Play This Riff, which is great. He gets people on. He uh, films with them. He has them play a riff. He creates uh, tabs so that you can learn how to play all this cool shit. And that's that's amazing. It's super inspiring. And uh, you should go check it out. You find it on Instagram. And then he has a website where he has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds i think he said 2000 videos um of you know different instructional things with tabs uh attached to them so that's that's rad and i think there's uh maybe a few gear reviews on there as well so go check out uh play this riff go check out anything bob does he's also got us a rad sideband with uh tony reed it's called big scenic nowhere and it is fuck it delivers on the promise of killerness let me tell you so go uh you can find it on all the streaming services go over to Bandcamp, buy it support musicians support artists support creatives um because uh you know they're not able to gig right now they're not able to do a lot of stuff oh bob also teaches online lessons so uh after you go get happily surprised by how killer a guitar player he is why don't you hit him up about some lessons because uh, he's fucking great now this uh this episode had some had some freezes and stuff there it wasn't as bad as the last one but man the thing that the episodes have had in common where i've had these freezes is that they were on skype so i don't know i don't know if skype is Maybe it's on its way out. You know, it never used to happen before I turned on the video function so that I could, quote, have a personal vibe with the conversation. So those are great things, but maybe I'll push folks to to use Zoom or something. I don't know. But thanks for hanging in there. Um, I tried to edit this one so that a lot of those things, you know, didn't jump out or didn't impede on your ability to enjoy the conversation. So. Thanks for hanging in there. Now, listen up. You can support the Couchers podcast for a monthly pledge of as little as 99 cents a month. You can help this podcast and its sister video series thrive, flourish, grow, blossom. You can be very helpful and it would be much appreciated. Now, of course, I, I'm going to fuck this up again because I'm not uh, at home as I as I record this voice message. And I don't have all my pledge supporters because some of them are written down on a piece of paper. But I would like to thank some people right now. So listen up. Thank you, Ryan Waters. Thank you, Hayden Smith. Thank you, Jamie McParlin. Thank you, Teresa Morgan. And thank you, Matt Gavs. Thank you, Justin Jones. Thank you, Deja Colantuono. Thank you, Adam Pranica. Thank you, Dan Hurst. Thank you, Joan uh, McKagan-Baker. 
Thank you, Dan Leary. Thank you, Kathy Giordano. Thank you, Mike Lacerda. Uh, thank you, Rebecca Pellman. Thank you, Daniel Bland. Thank you, Chris Smith. Thank you, Justice Gash. You know, thank you, Rolla Amplifiers, for uh, connecting the dots with me and Bob. That was great. Thank you. Thank you, Steve Hall. Thank you, hmm, God diggity dog, darn it. Hey, listen, I'm sorry. I don't have the paper. I wouldn't even know my dog's names if they didn't have name tags. Um, thank you for supporting Couchrifts. Thank you to River City Guitars. Now, River City Guitars is the little shop that could out there in Spokane, Washington, right? You know Spokane. Um, Spokane's pretty rad. Spokaloo, Spokompton, Spovegas. Go, uh, go check out RiverCityGuitars.com. Now, if you have a guitar or a, a collection of guitars that you're trying to sell, you know, you're sitting on these things. You're like, ah, I don't know what I'm going to do. What am I doing with these things? My man over there at uh, River City Guitars, Bobby Kless, he wants them. He'll buy them. Go to their website, okay? Go to uh, RiverCityGuitars.com. You can get a hold of these guys at 509-818-7693 or sales.rivercityguitars at gmail.com. Now, like I said, they are always buying. Always. Every day is a buying day at River City. Okay? Get a hold of Bobby. Uh, Bobby will work it out with you. Maybe he'll come see you if you're within a, a drive. You know, my, my guy does a lot of miles on the road. Uh, maybe, I don't know. I don't know how he's going to do it. You guys work that out. But reach out to him. Also, hey, every week I go on. They finally posted some of these, uh, uh, just a few of the guitars they've they've been buying in the recent months. And uh, I picked one out. I picked out, uh, I mean, there are a lot of guitars that they recently posted that I'm super into, including some some old uh, Hamers, which I'm... I, I love, but listen, I'm bringing it all the way, all the way back. It's throwback whatever day you're listening, okay? Uh, My pick of the week is a uh, Fender 1952 Esquire Relic. Now this thing, they say it weighs six pounds, two ounces. Do you know how many ounces are in a pound? 16. That means that this is an eighth of a pound. Do you, six pounds is like, it's like having, uh, it's like having nothing. This thing is feather light. Uh, you need to get over there. Go, go snatch this thing up. This is a beauty. And let me tell you, if I could only have one guitar and that's it for the rest of my life, it probably, it probably would be a Telecaster. I got, I just, they got it right the very first time, you know, they did. It's 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 what you need. Everybody needs one. Go buy it. It's twenty seven ninety nine, plus a little bit of shipping, uh, and they're they're taking an offer. So go over there to River City Guitars. Check out this beautiful Esquire, and um, you know it almost rhymes with my name. So why not, why wouldn't that be my pick of the week? So uh, listen, we're gonna jump into the episode now. I thank you so much for listening. Be kind to each other. Remember the golden rule. I love you. Don't be a dick. Hello. Hello, oh, sir. Shit. Here we go. The last time, uh, last episode I recorded, I had a bunch of weird freezes, and I live out here in the boonies, man. Yeah. So, fingers crossed. I don't have any. Uh, here's some wood. Let me make sure I'm on the right network and all that. Yep, I'm good. Good. Excellent. Oh yeah, I didn't check that shit. The only other weird thing that can happen is that I could get a fire call because I'm a volunteer firefighter. Oh really? Really? Um, and there's a lot of folks because of the holiday. There's a lot of folks uh, gone, which is where. Weird. Uh, where do you live? I live upstate New York. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, we have, we still have a little tiny place in, uh, in Brooklyn 
which I saw you guys just rescheduled your dates. So yeah, fingers crossed. We could do all the same dates pretty much. Like that'd be great. The whole year <laughs> to 2021, you know? Right. Well, what, were they just copy and paste the dates? Pretty much. I think they're like, most of them are to the day, which is good. And then, you know, honoring the tickets from the previous year and everything. So. Oh, that's rad. Yeah. How you been? How's the, uh, how's your day to day right now? I mean, it's, it's cool. I do a lot of, a lot of teaching online, you know? Yeah. And that keeps me really busy. And then since I've been stuck at home, I've just been buying gear just to nerd out on guitar <laughs> gear. But usually I would be like, no, oh, you know, I don't really need that. But lately it's been like, yeah, I should have that. And I should, I should drink better beer. <laughs> just, just treat myself, you know? So it's, I mean, in a weird way, it's been kind of a wake up call. Like, holy shit. I could have had that amp a long time ago or that pedal a long time ago. Right. What, uh, what, what kind of things are you picking up? Um, just like different fuzz pedals. Uh, I got the, this is before quarantine, but I got a, a Rolla from Derek, like a 112. Yeah, rad. Which I love, and I love this thing. And The signature, but yeah. yeah. I just did, like, any kind of weird pedals I see and stuff that, you know, I'd like to just fuck around with for a day. And those, like, on Amazon, too, it's like, there's all those, like, $30 pedals, and you can just be like, it's 30 bucks, who cares? And usually I just play it once, but I'm like, but I'm usually just buying a bunch of weird, like, delays and phasers and modu- you know modulation things right because and i use the ba- uh bass weapon for me to shoot brad if i could plug his shit creepy fingers he, he did a fuzz pedal for me called the bulge which i've just fallen in love with and i use it daily then we kind of talked about you know the process for a while and, uh, but yeah that thing's like the best one on my board i mean yeah does he <laughs> really uh, does he sell that on his site uh yeah i think so you can, you can contact him directly but yeah uh being such a gear hound how stoked are you that you have a signature guitar, a signature amp, and a and a signature pedal? It's 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 weird. Yeah, it trips me out like every day. I, I wake up going, that, that's bizarre to me. Because if you told me that shit when I was like thirteen, right? I would have been like, fuck off, dude. There's no way that's happening. Yeah, that, yeah. I don't take it for granted. Like it's it's pretty awesome. And I've just been taking all my guitars and restringing them and, and making all of them, you know, perfect and everything. I, I never had the time to do that shit before. It was always just go, go, go. You know? Right. Do you do but tech now, work? I mean, can you set your guitars up and do you do... Yeah, like, I can set it up. Beyond that, I would take it somewhere. Like, if I wanted to refret or something, I wouldn't go near it myself, but... Yeah, I don't I can just set it up how I, how I like it, you know? Right. Yeah, you know, I'm just... I'm essentially really good at fucking my guitars up. <laughs> I, I never would, really realized how fucked up mine get until I actually sit down and try to dial them back in. I'm like, dude, like I just did this one before. I had a lesson before this call. I used it for one lesson. I'm like, I can't believe it's the same guitar. You know, it, was, it was pretty beat up. Well, that's one thing that you know, we, when we bought this house, I was like, all right, it's time to stop buying a guitar every few months. You know, <laughs> if I want to, I'm addicted to living indoors. So time to <laughs> cut that <laughs> shit. So what I started doing is just taking guitars that I hadn't touched in a while to get them set up. Yeah. And they, they play like a completely different guitar. Yeah. And, uh, all of a sudden you rekindle your romance with the guitar. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I have one that I haven't changed strings or done shit to since 2002 that I played with (laughs) with you for a long time. Yeah. You know, and I'm just cleaning out closets. I can geek it out at home. Like I was like, I should set this thing up. And I did it today. And it's like, what was it doing? Just sitting there collecting dust this whole time. Right. So how stoked are you that before all this stuff happened, you already, you had, you were teaching before this stuff hit, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have a a lesson studio in San Diego that I taught out of like three days a week and one day from home. Yeah. I did online, you know, and then everything just shifted to being online. And I went there uh, two days ago for the first time since like March 3rd wow. and it was fucking weird to see like where I placed my pencil and, and you know where there, I, I dropped some picks and it's just been sitting right. there I'm like what the fuck is, what a weird thing man but yeah I, I'm, I'm super fortunate that I get to not only like do that but just not think about shit for a while you know and just dive into music and be like oh rad this guy wants to learn like a yes lyric or something and I, like these are things that I would want to do on my own time anyway right uh and and you're staying 
uh, active and up to date with the website? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why I went to work so I could grab all my lights and shit. And so I just decked out this place over the weekend so I could start adding content again. You know? Yeah. All my all my shit's just been sitting there. But um, yeah, I try to update it every every couple of weeks. I throw a new video up. Or just, or, or you know, rotate some of the other ones to make them free for people who aren't really familiar with what it is. And, right. So you do like a teaser, and then the website has exclusive content. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it too. Yeah, I got really, I got really nerdy about that for a long time, like early two thousands. I think I was, I was trying to to edit and tab out like one thing a day, and it takes a while. And there's like two thousand videos on there or something. Is that right? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff on. I mean, my wife was like, "You gotta calm down." Like, I think I have to split. I'm like, I swear, just let me get over this hump, and I'm gonna be like totally available again. And <laughs> yeah, I just I just did a shit ton, and, and then just you know had content to provide for a long time. What uh, what software are you are you using? Software to tab, or are you writing it out? Yeah, I use I use Guitar Pro, but yeah, it's uh, great, right? I use yeah, it's rad. I use an older version just because I like the. Uh, the PDFs that they provide a little bit better. Right. Like, the, I, I don't know. I'm just used to the font. Like, I tried updating it. I'm like, I don't like this. It's just me being weird, you know? But, yeah, I'll use Guitar Pro for that. And that's pretty fun. You know, it's it's good to be able to copy and paste sections instead of handwriting shit out all the time. It's pretty interesting. Like, did you, were you in, like, school band or anything like that where you learned how to play music or you knew? But I took, I took music theory a lot in high school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was just already so obsessed with it. They let me take it twice. They're like, fuck it. You're not going to do anything different than this. Like, you can just do it again. I don't even know why they did that. Like, I, I aced it. And they're like, just do it again. Right. Uh, but, yeah, I did that. And then that's about it, though. I took lessons and shit in high school from, like, different dudes around town. But our bass player, Mitch, you took lessons from also. And, and we didn't really know each other. But then, you know, upon joining Mitch, I was like, oh, fuck, we know. We, we learned from the same dudes pretty much. Right. Right. Uh, when I have used that Guitar Pro software, uh, it was interesting. If there was an intricate part where I didn't know, like, uh, I don't know, I have funny names for certain licks, like a Look At Me, Look At Me, or an Ernie. That's totally good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, what is that? Is that a triplet? What is that? A, a 16th note with a, with a, like a ghost? Like what? And then just sometimes by the process of elimination just like moving notes around in the software yeah i learned a lot just about notation mm -hmm. you're yeah, probably smarter studied. about that shit than i am but i never studied it i never really practiced learning i didn't want to learn to read music or any of that shit um but yeah i mean guitar pro makes it so easy you just do the tabs and it's right there i used to do really geeky shit when i first started if it was like a, a strange rhythm i couldn't figure out um GarageBand would have like a real time thing where you could play the keyboard and it would go and the notes would just appear. Right. So I, to the click, I'd be like, and just do the rhythm of the thing and then see it and then steal the notation from that and put it into GarageBand. And move the and notes around. Like, yeah, and move them around until, until it works. The, like, um, I interviewed uh, Daniel from Voivod and. Uh, that, I can't like I don't know if you're familiar with Voivod at all, but like that shit is so bizarre and yeah. fucking it rad, but like really hard to figure out. And I had to like email him a few times and go, "Can you just please tell me what you're doing here?" I, <laughs> and it was like some time signature that had never existed before. I'm like, "What the fuck?" You know, He's that, in that, a, guy's on fire. that guy's eleven teen, eleven teen <laughs> over eight. <laughs> yeah, I think it was like thirteen fifteen. I'm like, that's not even possible. But yeah, he, he sells the uh, he sells the the tabs to their stuff at the merch booth. Like he's fucking programmed everything. It's, Is that right? It's, it's amazing. Yeah, and he's got like all like the lyrics, the drums, the bass, the guitar, like the full on music book for a lot of those Voivod records that he sells at the merch booth, like twenty bucks or something. That's, That's I've never even heard of anyone doing that. That's yeah, incredible. And, and they look good. Like I mean, it's like they're it's not like something you just printed out at home. Like they're fucking good looking. Really? Yeah. He's a talented dude. Uh, that's awesome. Totally. I, I remember, I mean, I don't know if you were into 80s shred guitar or anything like that, but... That's what I, yeah, that's where I was, like, 
grew up, you know, just it was like when I first was interested in guitar, that was like in your face at all times, you know. Right. Like, but yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, I have my original copy of the Steve Vai Flexible record. Yeah. And inside, there's a little, you know, mailer catalog thing and you could you know you could write to him at his fucking address and you know you could order notation for the songs (laughs) it's fucking crazy right wow that's funny that's the only other time i've ever heard of anyone doing that yeah yeah this dude did it like in boy boy did it to stuff that you know he wasn't in the band from the start so you had to figure that shit out and have Oh, he wasn't. He wasn't no, in the band. Had, yeah, he wasn't the original. The original passed away. The original guitar player. So he stepped in and, and figured out all that shit, which is insanely difficult. And then, like, went, oh, we could probably go further and doing this kind of. It's just fucking amazing. Wow. You started playing guitar when you were young. Yeah, around like twelve or thirteen. That's pretty young. How? Uh, I tried. I tried when I was like nine and. It was just shitty. It was like House of the Rising Sun. Like nothing against that song. It's it's great. The whole but it was like giving a kid like a bunch of chords and going here, do that now. And I was like, fuck that. I'm going skateboarding. But when I was twelve, then then it kind of stuck. But there's a certain. I mean, what's the youngest student you'll take on? Man, when I first started the studio, it was like I was like I don't care. You know, I just wanted to get a clientele, and then I don't know, like six. Anything younger than that is just kind of like brutal. You know, I I gave Henry Mc, uh, McCaig a couple lessons when he was seven, maybe. Oh, right. I taught him too. That's funny. Yeah, Andrew brought him over. We all lived in Seattle at the time, and it just yeah, I was thought like you were in Seattle right now. That's funny. Yeah. Um, it just too. I yeah, it's too much for a little person's hands to play. Yeah, and push no, the I strings really, down. Yeah, I, I taught him for like a like a year. He's he's really good. He's uh, yeah, he's he's coming right along. Yeah, he uh, you know he's got uh, he's got his old man as as uh, turns out he's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's all right too. Yeah. Um, yeah, do you take lessons ever? Have you? I mean, you spend. I thought about it. Yeah, I thought about it. Like during during all this quarantine shit, I was like, "Fuck, I I don't really have time to." But right. like, there's one jazz guy that I follow on Instagram that's like fuck I want to plug him I can't remember his name Jens Lawson and okay. he's, he's fucking rad and like he'll, he'll show shit and it, it it like clicks where you know other times I'm like trying to go okay I understand what you're doing but how do you just apply that on the fly and he's really good at, at showing it so that was one guy I was thinking of reaching out to but I don't I haven't had a lesson since like high school right out of high school I think right occasionally I'll think about it. I'll be like, oh, you know what? Uh, or I'll get the stupid idea. Like I'm going to fucking enroll in the Berkeley online thing. <laughs> you know And then I'm like? What the fuck am I thinking? Like, I don't have time for that shit. Learn at your own pace. Yeah, no, it's. If I'm going to take an online course, I'm going to take like a, some sort of video editing soft, you know, video editing course. Kind of more return on your investment. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because, uh, you know, I'm an old dog. <laughs> what am I going to do with new tricks? Yeah, you can still learn new tricks. I mean, I, I, I learn a lot just from figuring out shit for other people. But, um, like, Play This Riff has been really rad to, like, sit down with some of those guitar players and just kind of watch them. And then have to tab it out. I learned a lot of stuff from that. Like, there's a lot of stuff that I pulled from Wayne Kramer from MC5 uh, on the last two record. Where like he was showing how to play some of that shit, and he would be like, "Here's the, here's my part, here's the other part," and then he would just flip these chords around, and I was like, "Oh shit!" Like, all right, I'm doing that, then taking that one, and he never would know. He's he so would... rad. Yeah, he he was a really really nice, like welcoming individual. He was cool shit. Man. Yeah. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, you know, all of the flashy LA guitar players were were big they were on the cover of the magazines and so that's what i was paying attention to right and i was a big george lynch fan because he is fucking wicked right and i remember reading in a magazine him saying like talking about the time in between records or something he's like 
I moved to the desert and I started taking lessons from some 20 year old kid. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, he, I think he was already in his thirties at that point. I don't even yeah, know. Yeah. Um, but I remember thinking, what, you know, you're, you're taking guitar lessons yeah. and, uh, but yeah, as time has gone on, it it's it has made more and more and more sense. And I you know, I never I never made greater bounds in my playing than when I was uh teaching. Yeah. But at the same time I was like I was playing in a cover band that had like a five hundred song list. That yeah, I mean learning all that shit, definitely show you like every avenue that people go down or at least more you know it's crazy um i have tried to take lessons a couple times i took lessons from a guy who taught melody at git and he's an incredible guitar player i just i've talked about it on this show a bit where i've said i usually measure how good like i measure how good people are against the things I can't do. Like yeah. If you can do what I can do, like who cares? Yeah, that's, yeah. That's great. The, you're me. Great. Yeah, that's usually when I'm like tracking solos, I'll, I'll do a couple of takes and then I'll do one where I'll do like some weird shit that I usually wouldn't do. And right. I'll be like, oh, that's cool. But, you know, that's surprising. I'll, I'll keep that, I guess. Uh, but Travis picking is the thing that I suck at. Yeah, I could get rid of the pick, but... It's, it's hard man it's hard it's you, you're uh you know you're being a, a finger drummer or whatever at the same time as <laughs> like playing chords and a, and a melody like any of that chet atkins shit too forget it that stuff's hard yeah i got I, I took lessons from a guy when i was in high school that was a ragtime guy but he was like pretty gnarly alcoholic and he fucking just do the weirdest shit and say the weirdest shit he, he was funny <laughs> as fuck but he's ripping ragtime so you know in high school when everyone was doing the metal like shredding thing and so and you're I was like I'll, I'll just time. focus on this because I don't want to compete with all these dudes I'll just be the, the guy that can kind of fuck his way through rack time you know that's it works a little bit but it, it, you know you can learn stuff from all styles of music, you know? yeah I think that I made that realization that oh I'm ne- you know I'm never going to be I'm I don't and nor do I even want to sweep pick no, no, it's not I can't. Favorite. I can't do it. I don't have the focus to concentrate. You know, I just don't have that drive to. Yeah, to play no, it, it, it was weird. Yeah, it seemed weird to me too. It was like, like you're almost just reciting the alphabet. It's a, like, it's a cool, cool parlor trick. Because I mean, the difference between that and I just going. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like. <laughs> it's a cool trick. I love to see it on Instagram or whatever. It's great to see a, a nine-year-old play Black Star. <laughs> totally. You know, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. But probably not for me. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to be a seven-string guy ever. Uh, do, I, you have, I just can't, <laughs> do you have any weird instruments? Um, no, they're all pretty normal. I mean, like, about like a little synth that you control with like a pen. Oh, yeah. but I was like, those are fun. That's not that weird though. I have a lot of pedals, and a lot of amps and guitars, but nothing really too awkward. I still have my first guitar that I picked up when I was 12. It's an acoustic and I scraped like Ozzy in it and I put an <laughs> anarchy sign on it. Like you would do <laughs> as a 12 year old. Yeah, of course. Fucking anarchy. I wrote eat fuck on it. Cause I saw that on Hepfield's guitar. Of course. And, and then just carved up the neck with like Metallica, Ozzy, Scorps, and then went to my lesson, and the, the people there were just like laughing at me, like, "Was that the M note right there on your neck? <laughs> what are you doing?" That's amazing. And I still have it. Like, I still, I still play it, and I used it to record like last year. And it, it's fun. I don't know what it is. I don't know what brand it is. It just kind of fell no off. markings on it or anything. Nothing. It's just a shitty nylon string that like it took the bridge out and it like lowered itself to this perfect level. And, what else? It, it's a tribute instrument. That's like the weirdest thing I have because it's just had so much history, you know, that it has a bunch of shit carved into it, which is kind of weird. Uh, yeah, I wish I still had my first guitar, but I just, I, I can't hang on to anything. I've had, I've had so much cool gear come and go. Yeah. 
What's uh, like the one piece you wish you kept? What's that? What's the one piece that you wish you had kept? You know, uh, are you familiar with coal guitars? K O L L Cole. Uh, he's a builder up in Portland. He he used to be down in in uh, Southern California, and uh, I've owned a number of his guitars over the years. And I still have my favorite one, which was the second one that I ever had. But the first one I ever had was incredible, and uh, it was ah oh, fuck. Are you there? Right. Yeah, weird. Again yeah, with this shit. Um shit, where were we? I think you were talking about a gear or a guitar that you Oh like, yeah. It's like uh you know, it's a real simple like slab body. I had a maple neck, three P nineties and a Wilkinson, and it sounded like a fucking piano, man. I <laughs> that's right. I broke my leg at one point, didn't work, or I couldn't even walk for months, and uh, so I had to get rid of some shit to to get get through that. Um, I wish I still had that guitar. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, but, I don't know. I had like two eight hundreds from like the mid eighties. I fucking don't know where they are. <laughs> it's so funny. I you know at that same time I got rid of my. Um, single channel 50 watt JCM 800. I, I missed got, that. I got rid of an SLO 100. Oh, wow. From the, you know, one of the 90s ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had a Bogner Shiva, which I think was kind of cool. It was a little squishy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just don't know. Like, I, I an 800. But yeah, I mean, you're. The Rolla Signature Amp is essentially a, a single channel 800. Um, yeah, I mean it's uh, it's got KT88s, and it's got the Postmaster volume. But yeah, that thing's fucking crazy. And it, it's I don't know. I've been playing information for so many years, and it's like finally, I haven't even played one show with this thing. Like I got it, and I was like, we I had the whole year playing. I mean, everyone's inconvenienced, obviously. But right. it's just sitting here like it was it was ready to go. <laughs> but it'll be out. It, it, we'll, I'll play it. I'll play it out. Uh, yeah. I fucking love it. It's really good. Uh, yeah. The uh, Rolla amps are, you know, they're everywhere in Seattle. You see them. Everyone's got one up there. Right. And uh, uh, Derek's great. Yeah, I want I want Derek to do well, man. Like, <laughs> shit's crazy. Oh, that's another interview, but you know what? I can wait. What? Oh. <laughs> um. Yeah, you know, it, speaking of the like all the '80s stuff, like all those uh, all those players had signature guitars, signature, you know, signature amps weren't. Well, it wasn't really a thing until the fifty one fifty, right? I mean, I don't. What was the first signature amp? Yeah, yeah that's a good question. I think. I mean, is it a Steve Vai amp? Didn't like Mesa Boogie and Metallica do some shit? Man, no, like, I don't know, man. No, they just right. used the Mark IVs, right? Yeah, yeah. Huh. I played the the Kerry King one at a gig once. That was pretty fun. The uh, JCM eight hundred. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that was like that was even later. That was later. Yeah, no, that was later. That was like the the two thousands, right? Zach Wild also had the signature eight hundred. Mm. Yeah, I can't really think of anyone else, but yeah, the, the shit that Derek's doing is so rad. Yeah, he's I, killing. I want, him, I want him to continue doing lots of things because, like, for, to to find something of this caliber, like back in the day, that wasn't just going to get hand built, like you were going to get right. lucky and find it somewhere. It's, it, you know, you never fucking know. So it's, it's 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 great that there's a dude like Derek around. You know? How did you end up connecting with with Ken and Reverend? Um. I was working at a guitar shop, like teaching in San Diego. Yeah. And uh, the, the owner was like, hey, dude, like I was going to get my 79 SG refretted. And he's like, I'm the go-to guy. I, I did Warren D. Martini's back in the day. Like, let me do it. I'll do it one day. And then I'm like, fuck, all right, you can do it. And then I got on tour and like we were playing in San Francisco at Slim's. 
and the fucking strings are getting caught underneath the frets. Uh-huh. A fret I could just pull out. <laughs> I was like, dude. So I quit working at that guy's place immediately and I suffered through a couple of shows. And then Ken happened to email me or email our manager. And he's like, yeah, you know, when they come to Detroit, we want them to try out some guitars. And I've been playing Gibson's like SGs for years. Yeah. So I, usually I would have been like, yeah, you know, I'll give it a shot. But I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. And then he showed up and they were fucking amazing and it, like saved my life. <laughs> it was yeah. Such good timing. And, you know, I was like, I'll take anything because these frets are falling out. And then I played it and I was like, this is, it plays so much better than what I had anyway. And right. it sounds fucking amazing that, yeah, it was good. I think those guys are doing, yeah, I think they're fucking dynamite. Um, it's, you know, I think that traditionalists have all these reservations, right? About like, oh, I can only play, a, you know, a vintage this or a vintage that. And it's, uh, I kind of, I kind of feel like, well, let me ask you this. Do you drive a, a fucking 63 Ford F100? <laughs> That's oh, the only car I drive. That's the only one I trust. Oh, you don't? Why <laughs> not? Why forever not? Because it's a pain in the ass. It's, it sucks. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, guess what? I have, I got news for you. Yeah. I mean, I, I like both schools that I, I, Mixing the two sounds too is cool, but yeah, I, I haven't played like vintage gear on tour since like the nineties, maybe. Right. Uh, so. Well, if you break it's something, cool. it's hard to hard to yeah. replace. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's one thing if it's all oh, it sounds amazing, but it's not working. <laughs> so you're like, well, fuck. What am I supposed to do? Also, if you have like a sentimental attachment to it, like you know, yeah. uh, SGs typically like how many times do you break the headstock on that thing ever? Actually, I did. Uh, not this, but on my SG, I did. I did. Right. But I was, like, flying. And, you know. And right. I have a shooting case. But, yeah, just once. I don't know. But, yeah, these things are pretty much indestructible. I haven't had any problems with these reverends. The no, they're fucking great, man. And, like, I'll have this thing. I'll teach, like, 10 hours a day. Fucking different tuning every hour. Right. Open tunings. Just random shit. And, and at the end of the day, it's still just like, I'm fine. I'm good. You know, I think I intonate it maybe once every couple of months. But, yeah, they take, they take a beating. They take a beating. I should probably learn. I should buy a book or I guess you can watch videos now. Are you, I mean, how did you learn how to, to work on your, like, I won't even change a pickup. Oh, I won't either. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I'm not doing any soldering. No, just, just doing the intonation. It's just tuning it, you know, on right. the back side. But other than that, yeah, I just do that and learn until I like it. But I would like to be able to swap out pickups. I just cleaned out my garage and I got a bunch of old pickups and a bunch of rail hammers and shit that I'd like to throw into some other guitars. I, I bought a version of my very first guitar, which was a PV Patriot. Mm-hmm. And I ordered a rail hammer to put in it. And it was going to be my big learn how to install a, a pickup yeah. situation. And then I just, I farted out. I was like, nah, I'm, I'm going to pay someone to do it. <laughs> <Some people. laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I mean, during this time being stuck at home and shit, I was like, I should learn to do that. You know, I, I learned to cut my dog's hair. You I did. Fucking, yeah. I cut my dog's hair. I replaced the screen door, which is a big thing for me because I'm not handy at all. Oh, I learned how to do shipping from home, which is fucking awesome. I don't know why. For years, I've been taking all the food records to the post office like an asshole. Really? Like, you were yeah. And I, oh, dude. It's, it's forced me to be like, you don't have to live this way. I would I would be like, I have to get to work quickly. So before I go to work, I have to ship all these records, and I have too much shit to do. It's like, you don't have to do all that. You just do oh, all that. no. Well, do you use USPS or do you use stamps? I, I got a stamps account. Um I don't know which is best or not. I'm just trying to get shit out, you know, because for I, there was a lot of orders that I had right when COVID hit. And I was like, fuck, I'm sorry. I'm not going to the post office. But then people right. started going like, where's my record? And I'm like, there's, there's got to be a better way. <laughs> um, you know, living out here in the country, the post office is only open uh, from 1 p.m. till 5 p.m. Nice. Monday through Friday. There's no delivery here. 
So no delivery there. Mailman does not show up and deliver to the house. I have to go yeah. to the post office. And then Saturday it's open from eight to eleven. Wow. So if I have a long work day, Saturday is kind of the only sometimes the only opportunity that I have to go there. So I had I had to learn how to mail stuff because I do I sell the like couch of stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And send out to uh vi- people that perform in the videos. They get a very nice they get a little set. We should oh, talk right. about this. He, he gets you set up with a, a set. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah oh, don't talk about it out loud. I hope that I'll beep it out. We want to make them surprises. Oh, it's okay. like Fight Club, <laughs> man. <laughs> uh, so is Fu Manchu the only, or well, I guess you've been in other bands. I know you have a... Um, you have a, a side band with Tony Reed, right? Love Tony. Yeah. It's a big CEO. Yeah. From the age of 19, like, you've been in the band for that long? Yeah, yeah. Because you're like 25. <laughs> 42. Yeah, I joined when I was 19 and, like, just fucking didn't, pretty green. I mean, I could play, obviously, or else they wouldn't entertain the idea, but it was like, just get up on that stage. And just, here, we'll plug you in. <laughs> just do it. I'm like, okay. It was, yeah, it was a trip. It was, it was a big learning experience. But I'm stoked that it happened for sure. Yeah, 19. Action is go. Was the first one. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I'd only been in the band like six months. I, while we were recording Action is go, we flew to San Francisco for my, my first gig with them. So I hadn't even done a gig yet with them. You know? But I was a fan since high school. Uh, they used to... They used to practice at my friend's house, and because his dad didn't care if they played loud music or whatever, and he's like, right. "You got to check out this band from Manchu. They've been playing at my house, and yeah, it, it worked out nicely. So that's cool." And no sign of slowing down. I mean, other than everyone's fucking slowing down this year. <laughs> other than the current situation, right? Uh, no, no. I mean, we were all set to do three ten inches this year for our thirty thirtieth uh, anniversary. And, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we've been talking about getting together for practice and shit, but every time we do, it's like, I don't know, it just gets kind of sketchy around Orange County, where, where they live. I live in San Diego. Right. But yeah, hopefully soon we can get back together and start writing again. We just had a 10-inch come out uh, two or three months ago, with taking it to the streets from the Doobie Brothers, like a cover, and the two originals. I heard that. <laughs> it's it's oh, yeah. pretty sick, yeah. Yeah, we slowed down and, and put it... I try to drop it to like a darker key a little bit. Right. Well, it's great. I mean, the 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 melody of the music is is intact, and you're like, "Whoa, it's, I didn't realize that song could sound like sinister in any way at all." Yeah, because I think in the what do they do under the keys? They're going like, I think they're going like, like that kind of keyboard line, yeah. Right. And then we just put it like in G's. I was like, Yeah, you, know, you change that one root note and then and then make the G like Right. Like a, you know. So yeah, it worked out pretty fun. That was, that was a cool one. And and to get praise from, you know, their guitar player, I was like, holy shit. Like I Really? There's probably Doobie Brothers blasting in my backyard right now, like as my family's hanging out. Like I'm a pretty big fan, so that was, that was cool to hear. You got the endorsement, you say? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty uh, sweet. He heard, yeah, he heard it and he was like, "Oh, it sounds mean," and it's you know just as relevant today as you know. But yeah, it was cool that to have him acknowledge it. That's rad. You got to get him on play this riff. Oh my god, I would love to. I would love that. There was shit like on. Um, was it Black Water? Is that the fucking Doobie Brothers song I'm thinking about? Oh, Black Water. Black Water. Keep on rolling. Yeah. yeah, but we anyway, we were recording We Must Obey, and this is before you could go on YouTube and find isolated tracks really easily, but they had the maskers for that. And we just sat around drinking beer, like isolating shit, and it was fucking gnarly. Like, some of the guitar work is like finger style shit that you don't even hear in the track. Like, right. Oh, the yeah, the, ac- the, the vocal acoustic harmony. bits. Yeah, the, and they're really complicated. Like, they kind of pop out in the mix a little bit, but there's, like, this whole 
baseline thing going too. You know, it's like playing rack time. Type shit. Do you remember when when Pro Tools became accessible and every studio had it and and your friends started to have it? I don't know how, if you use any DAWs or if you if you're into it. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I am a little bit, but it, remember, yeah, I was like really slow. Like it came out. And I was like, uh, but do you remember the first time you heard stems from a popular <laughs> recording? It blew. Like I think that the yeah. first one I heard was was actually Absolutely. Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it fucked me up, man. <laughs> it's weird. It was. It just blew my mind. Like how the, f- how in the fuck. A, do you get this? Like, where does yeah. where does this shit come from? And you hear those dudes do it like, like who sings that shit? You sing that, I'll sing this. You sing that. It's that, that's a crazy. weird. Crazy. Inter- yeah, yeah, that, that shit's creepy. That creeps me up too. <laughs> and it sounds like, you know, vocally, and it's just this fucking laser tight as well. Yeah. You know, this is pre like that was recorded. Pre, oh, just fucking, you know, clip that off with the razor blade tool. Yeah, you know, right. like every these are hand. The everyone is riding the faders on this thing. Yeah, yeah, that's a performance for sure. Uh, mixing crazy. was a was a different art back then. Yeah, my first recording of commit shoot automation was available, so it was like tribute. To, you're like, oh, okay, you just do that. Yeah, I can't like if like fuck you watch the making of Dark Side of the Moon and shit. It's just like whoa, like you got to fucking be on. Yeah, you know, everyone's on their station. That's killer. Did you ever yeah. see that? There's like a ten minute documentary about the making of that ten cc song. I'm not in love. I'm not in love. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Like how they how they did that shit, and that was like way ahead of its time. What song. the actual fuck? <laughs> they just they played the faders like a keyboard like a synthesizer yeah 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 uh, it, that, that's really cool that shit's fun. they could have just uh borrowed a mellotron from the studio down the road probably but <laughs> these guys had another idea it was amazing i still yeah i, I watch that thing every three months i think that song gets a lot of play around here too like my wife and I don't agree on music so much, but like that—that's definitely one of them. We both trip out. You and your wife do not agree on music much. I mean, you know, I grew up with like metal, and I'm, you know, if I'm listening to like Slayer when I'm cooking, she doesn't, you know, want to hear Slayer. But like, we both have a love for like jazz guitar players and shit. So that's where we kind of meet in the middle. And right. like Ten CC, like you know, Foreigner, Bad Company, and shit like that. But what does what does she think about Fu Manchu? It, she, I mean, she likes it. It's just funny. I'm like, can you name like five songs? <laughs> she has trouble. She's like, and she'll fuck them up. She'll be like, the mongoose flies on by. <laughs> it's just called mongoose. That's cool. I, the road because uh, you move too slow. She's been on tour with us before. I'm like, <laughs> no, I think uh, I like that though. I don't think my my wife couldn't name a single loaded song. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and... I mean, it would be weird if, if she's way into it, but. Um, yeah, she we, we get along on like seventies like soft rock and shit. Like yeah. once I reached my forties, I was like fucking like Ambrosia and Firefall and all that shit. I'm like, all right, I can probably listen to this now. And it's right. Like, well, yeah, you're like all of a sudden you're like, oh, these uh, complex chords actually sound pretty nice. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I saw Ambrosia and like fucking almost lost my shit. They were really good. Um, we we came and saw. The uh, stoned and dusted last year. Okay, right on. So, uh, one thing that we, me and my wife, certainly agree on is the Melvins. Like, there's she knows like five bands, right? She knows the Melvins and Rush and Yes. She's got and and then all this like, um, and a deep knowledge actually of like '90s R and B and hip hop, <laughs> but. Uh, but we uh, we got out there and we were a little behind, but we caught most of the Fu Manchu show and she was so stoked. She was like, right holy shit, how did I never know about this? I was uh, like, I right. don't know, because you know five bands. <laughs> well, 
Yes and Russian. But I mean, that's a heavy list. That's good. Oh, yeah. No, she's got a... Uh, it's, it's interesting, like... It's crazy that my wife is... Because she's 10 years younger than me, too. And so, so she's 38. Like, right. I don't know why. I, don't, I have no idea what the appeal of Rush and Yes is to her, but she loves it. Yeah, I mean, Rush, like, I, I've seen Rush before. There's there's a handful of chicks there, but, you know. I mean, right. Dudes are definitely way more into it, which is, you know. Oh, sure. Yeah, you bet. She has this crazy ability to pick out because she's um maybe she's got she doesn't have much of a of pitch recognition like she she couldn't sing you a melody really uh Uh, but i think she's got relative pitch like she can hear a chord progression like she she's pointed out a number of songs to me and it blows my mind. Cause I, I occasionally like something simple, like fucking Andy Warhol by David Bowie and, uh, master puppets, right? There's that line. Doodle, 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 doodle. It's like, Oh yeah, that's the same. But there are a lot, there are a lot of other pretty complex things where she'll recognize a chord progression and it'll, it'll stand out to her more than it would stand out to me. And, and she'll make me stop and we'll go back and listen to the two songs next to each other. And oh, they wow. might not be in the same key, but the, the chord modulations, the chord progression is the same. Like if it's a one fucking yeah. you know, four, whatever. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, learning, learning 500 songs, like you probably came across a lot of tunes. That were like, oh yeah. Are same, you kidding me? Or fucking chord. There's a, that Wikipedia page, if you put in like one one six four five, and it'll show you all the songs that have that progression, and it's like, it's funny. It's oh so yeah. Funny. Uh, the good thing about ha- so that band that I was talking about was a live karaoke band. Uh huh. And um, I probably made the most musical growth of my life during that period, other than when I first like the first three years when I picked up a guitar. Just because I played bass and guitar, right? And then we were doing everything. Top 40, country, rock, some metal. You know, it it was nuts. But like some of the pop shit, like every once in a while, fucking Come On Eileen would come on. Someone would, and you'd be like, God damn it anyway, you know? There's so many chords in that thing, man. Oh, yeah. No, that, that, that is pretty. And no notes, you know, no no music on stage. There's always this, there was one guy who knew every song. And so he could like, he could call out a chord to you if you, you know. Usually it's the bridge that would get you. Oh, yeah. yeah. The bridge would get you. But in the 500 songs, really, there are... There are like 25 songs that you can rely on. They're going to get picked every night. Yeah. Then there's yeah. another rotating 40. Going like a wedding mix. Every wedding I've been to, it's like the same fucking tunes. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Right. Do you, uh, have you done anything like that? Like cover, like cover band gigs? Like no, bo- I mean, when I was a kid, like I was in a, band where we did like misfits covers and, and the first Danzig record a little bit and shit that's, but that was like that's eighth, a bit different yeah that's like eighth grade but yeah eighth <laughs> and ninth grade but yeah nothing really like i think i did no <laughs> it's just been, what about the it's fucking... been like that and then like you made you like i was in in high school i was in like a after that like in a band where we tried we tried to play like 70s funk but you know right. we were like too fast because we we're kids and and we played these backyard parties and Dudes be all drunk, like, well, play some Slayer, and we're like, <laughs> yeah, doing shit like that, and that was pretty fun. But yeah, I went from that to like, you know, too. Were you doing like Earth, Wind, and Fire, that kind of shit? We never did covers. No, we wrote our own shit. Like, yeah, we'd write our own our own tunes. We still did one Misfits cover. What's <laughs> that? We still did one Misfits cover. We 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 would do Death Comes <laughs> Ripping, but the, in between like <laughs> doing the fuck shit, we just do Death Comes Ripping. And, That's but, amazing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
that shit is hard. Have you ever have you ever uh, tried to learn any of the like Michael Jackson songs guitar? Yeah, yeah, I've had to do a lot of shit like that for people or older gentlemen that want to learn Earth, Wind, and Fire, or, you know, shit like that. It's, I was I had uh, one student that was into like all the um, like piano heavy David Bowie songs, and and he wanted to learn them on guitar, which is really fucking fun. Hunky Dory era, like that kind of shit. I don't remember any of them, but I remember learning it and going like, "Fuck, this is rad!" Like I gotta, I gotta save all these, you know, all these ideas. You ever go through a Mick Ronson phase? Uh, yeah, yeah, Mick Ronson. Oh, dude. Yeah, he's not. Um, try to get those tones. Oh, it's crazy. Um, I, I basically rip off. Bowie and Mott the Hoople and one a song, my solo record. It's hard. I feel like it's okay because I think that Bowie borrowed generously from from many folks. Yeah, but especially on Hunky Dory. Yeah, he did it so good though. So, oh, it's that, incredible. that incredible! Fucking the whole like his whole catalog and that last video he did before he died was like. Have you seen that? Yeah, it's, like it's the, fucked one up. Of the most haunting I can't watch. That I, it's so fucking haunting, and, and like it just like affects me. I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude. No, I think Ooh. the first time I saw it, I cried. <laughs> it was it's heavy, dude. It fucked like me it's up. heavier than any any fucking metal video or any like it's heavy. You're just like, dude, wow. Yeah, it, it, I haven't watched it in a long time. <laughs> I think I, I kind of put it aside. I haven't even thought about it, but I remember seeing it. I had to watch it again. Just like, well, I think that's a thing where when you're young, heavy means one thing, right? <laughs> totally. Heavy is just, it's one thing and one thing only. And then as you, and not even get older, but as you mature, you realize, oh, heavy, heavy is, is not distortion. Heavy yeah. is, is a vibe. Heavy is a feel. Heavy is in the, is in the right hand. Right, dude. I, I I I don't know why this guy hasn't been on my radar like my whole life, but I, I some kid was asking to learn some some Nick Drake shit, and like that oh. stuff. I'm not even. I was like, oh yeah, I'll check it out, and I was like, fucking capo, and then weird tunings, and then and then just the the lyrics and the way his delivery, and then then I start reading about him, and I'm like, holy fucking shit, like that's oh, yeah. heavy. It's heavy, dude. Oh yeah, dude. That's uh, yeah, super heavy. And any of the like funkadelic heavy. Like yeah. that shit is heavy. Yeah. Although yeah, it a, is distorted. Uh, I did like a maggot brain cover or whatever. I'm teaching maggot brain to someone and I'm like, oh, I'll fucking throw this on Instagram. I love that solo and everything. And but then I woke up and George Clinton liked it and started following me. And I was like, shit. And like it was right when like the lockdown started and it was just this fucking glimmer of hope, like fucking something good. So I did right. like I was so amped that he liked it. It was really I, who knows if he even does his own It seems like he does. But yeah. Uh that's rad. Yeah. I, I remember love, um probably the coolest thing that happened to me the this one year at NAM was that I met well actually that year I also met Uli John Roth, which was <laughs> fucking amazing. Yeah. But I met Blackbird McKnight. And uh I mean those are the only two people that I asked to take a picture with. <laughs> you know, it's just like, I don't, I mean, I sure I like many players that I see wandering around, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to bother you. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool dude, right? Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. I was leaving and he was out waiting for a car by himself. No one else was around. And I, I walked by and I said, hey, and I was like, holy shit, that's, that's really John Roth. And I just stopped and I was like, hey man, would you take a picture with me? You know, I I you're I think you're amazing. I don't mean to I don't want to bother you or anything, but it'd be really cool for, for me to have a picture with you. Like, can you just take a picture of me? He'd be like so confused. Can you, like, can you take a picture? Hey, would you take a picture of me with this palm tree, please? So, <laughs> hey, excuse me <laughs> kindly, sir. Hey, you don't seem to be doing anything. <laughs> Yeah, that that would be pretty funny. I, I I was supposed to get him on play this riff, and I was fucking super pumped. And then at the last minute, he, he, something happened scheduling wise. 
I would love to do that. That'd be fucking killer. If there's anyone uh, that I've had as a guest that you don't have access to, man, I'll tell you, you know, I do, it's hard for me to keep pace because I have a full-time job and I'm doing two podcast episodes a week. Oh, wow. Um, plus working on the videos and working yeah. on my fucking solo record. And it's it's really hard for me to keep pace, but also it's hard to to get people locked down and, and committed, right? Yeah. If you go through uh, the lineup of folks that I've had on the show, if there's anyone on there that you want an intro to, you let me know and I'd, I'd be happy to introduce yeah. you. Yeah, I'd be stoked. I've, uh, I've had some people like submit footage during this time, which is like fucking crazy. I don't even have to go anywhere. That's Which, great. You know, I know obviously like right now I wouldn't be knocking on people's doors and be like, hey, can I come in and put a camera in your face? But like just to get the introduction would be rad, you know, and, and, and hold on to that. Have you, you haven't considered, so my form, my whole format changed when this happened, right? Yeah. Because I used to, it used to just be me and one or maybe a few people when we'd all yep. cram onto a couch like a, a bunch of fucking sardines, right? and make a fun go of it i did a bg's video with like four people on a couch once and did an aerosmith with four or five people super fun um but you know when i moved up here it was super hard for me to i'm two hours two and a half hours from the city so it became hard and you know at at one point someone was like oh why don't you do it online and just have people track their things separately and i was like ah sounds terrible and this happened it was like uh you know it's like a, a blessing it's it's at yeah, least yeah, worth, you kinda, you have to. people would want to see it like you could you could do it like this and and record it you know yeah i won't say what, what it is <laughs> what's that i won't say what what tune it might be with your show with your show oh yeah yeah i mean i i've had people just know that like I mean, cameras on iPhones aren't terrible or anything. Just send stuff. And, like, I'll just drunk dial sometimes and be like, oh, I'll be rad to get this dude. And I'm just going through my record collection and get right. emails together. And, and sometimes it works. And it's like, holy shit. Like, I'm way into this, this like old Italian hardcore band named Raw Power that's fucking gnarly, like double bass. And, and they were, they're insane. I tracked that guy down. And he was, he just, the next day, he's like, here's me playing some of that shit. I'm like, fucking what? That's awesome. And you reach out, how do you reach out on like, on Instagram or Twitter? Yeah, like whatever, or, in, yeah. Instagram or, I mean, whatever way I can really. Right. Yeah, sometimes I'm I'm surprised at how, how receptive folks will be to doing it. And other times I'm, you know, just like crickets. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Well. I mean, I've had that too, but it's just like in the percentage game, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, of course. If I put out 100 emails, it's going to work. Right. Somebody, hopefully. Uh, so, and so how long have you been doing it? You said you have 500 videos? No, there's like, there's like almost 2,000. There's a shit ton on there. Fucking crazy. What Because I started fuck? it, I started it in 2000, I started working on it in 2007, or halfway after 2006. But anyway, it went live 2009, and then I've been doing it ever since, and I used to do a lot more. I, I've been teaching a lot, so I haven't had a lot of time. But I'm still sitting on a lot of footage that can be added, like a lot of a lot of MC5, Wayne Kramer stuff. Yeah. Uh, this band, Municipal Waste. Uh, Rad. Yeah. Uh, fuck, there's a bunch. Trying, not, there's like stuff I've even gotten to from back in the day too. Really? But, yeah. I'm trying to think. Of, I'd have to look. I think I have some like old war shit that I could put up there. Marty Friedman, we just did. There's a couple more videos of that. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff. I got like hard drives like up to my ceiling in my closet, and I'll just go through them and go, "Fuck, I forgot I had that," you know, and, and kind of edit it down. And I should probably do more of that shit. <laughs> now that I, 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 I wanted to do more shit, um, but COVID hit, and all my, most of my stuff's in my office, you know. So I went there, like I said, this last couple of days and cleared out a bunch of stuff. So I'll be ready to. To add things there. So, having having the website and have it be a subscriber based uh, service, have you 
so you've just foregone the Patreon model? I mean, that that wasn't even a thing when I started it. Right. And when I started it, I, I did it because I wanted to feature, like, Fu Manchu stuff and, and um, studio footage, gear, song, lesson, shit, whatever. And that's I started doing that and then my own thing, too, just, like, lessons and stuff. And uh, I was just going to sell it on, on iTunes or whatever format you could download Quick Time movies at the time. Right. And then, you know, I was like, well, people are just going to share that shit. So I did some research and found it's, it's like a turnkey site. You buy it and it's already set up to run cards and do shit. And it's behind a firewall. So, yeah. So I've just been with that ever since, you know, it hasn't really changed. And it's been pretty consistent. You know, it's been good. That's it great. Like, it doesn't fucking go crazy and i'm like whoa it's just been kind of like Zoop. all right let's cruise yeah <laughs> right i'd rather that than, than, than nothing at all so it's been pretty bad and it, it's given me a lot of opportunity to to meet musicians that i idolize and and some of them we've like made music together and shit which wouldn't have happened otherwise you know yeah that's killer so it, yeah it's, it, that, that's like the most valuable thing about it i think is, like tony reed like you know i, I did the Boy Bond shit, and he saw that, and he started sending me footage from his studio. And, oh, he's and, uh, such a stud, dude. He's fucking gnarly. He like every every aspect of music is like he's like, oh I'll, yeah, I do that. I can do that. I'll do that. No, he like, can do every. He's uh, he is the hard rock prince. Yeah, yeah, he's fucking rad, and and to be to be in a band with someone like that is is really fucking cool because it's you know he can mix at his house he can master he can record fucking whatever you need like it's really in a time like this like i've been sending him files and we're doing a tenant right now and, and you know it's it's cool to be able to just send stem and, and get shit mixed and released and, and when you don't even have to go out of your out of your house i'd like to go out of my house but you know he's a doer man he's a doer sometimes you know i guess once you are when you're in your 20s it's one thing to be in a band, right? Yeah. When you're in your 40s, it's kind of like, all right, we're fucking, we're doing this. I mean, you're either in a hobby band or you're in a band and you're doing it. And it's like, are you a doer? You're not? Okay, then next, right? <laughs> next. <laughs> uh, it's doing a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, I think I told you, he just... I was I sent him the playlist that I sent you and he's like, yeah. "Oh, I listened to this record this morning, so let's do this one." Yeah. I was like, "Great." I mean, you didn't even get past the B's in the list and you were just <laughs> And uh, then I it was like fucking 2 days later he sent me stems and a rough uh bass track that sounded just like the recorded version. Yeah. Um like he played the drums. Yeah, fucking yeah. Have you, have you heard a monster. That? Heavy Rock Chronicles, I think he called it. Yeah. Um, that he released where he, he like covers the song, but he covers the recording technique also, like where the mics were placed and fucking matching the tones. And... He's amazing. Yeah, yeah. He's fucking gnarly. We we did a, a three day like recording out in in Joshua Tree in November that I've been rifling through, and I've got like hours and hours of music. But it's really fun because you know I can we could just send th those sessions back and forth to each other and, and kind of fine tune it and trim the fat a little bit. Yeah. He's, he's, he's fucking hard. He's really talented. How deep into like editing and stuff do you go? Do you like, are you uh, adept at, I mean, I, I did a record, the big scenic no more record, like all the shit at my house, but it was except for the drums and the bass. Um, it did a lot of editing on that too, but that was like, a lot of that stuff was on the click because we didn't really realize like what was going on. It kind of just built in this weird way where me and Gary Jam, Gary from Donovan, and, and I just took the riffs and organized them and had people play over them. But I don't, I don't have Pro Tools or anything. I just make wave files, and it sounds cheesy, but like in GarageBand. But then you can just send those wave files to someone with Pro Tools. And get them sure, in. it's the same shit. You know, I'm using like good mic pre's and good mics and stuff. So I wouldn't really have the capability to record drums here. I wouldn't want it. Cause it's just I want to trust someone who knows their shit to do that, you know? But you're recording so. guitars at home? Yeah, yeah. Are you putting a microphone in front of a speaker? Or are you using uh yeah. No, uh, no, everything. Yeah, I got um, the Rolla. 
a bunch of shit back here. But yeah, I, I, I use a 421 and a 57, just kind of like, you know, on the side of the cone. And we just get weird in this garage and record shit. And yeah, it's it's pretty, it's it's good to be able to do that. Because I used to have to like take the day off work, load up my car, if I can drive right. to the studio. And, and with me too, they, they live like an hour and a half away. So I was trying to do some, some stuff with them. We're doing work. Pretty fucking rad. I'm starting to work on it. I don't even know if I should be saying that, <laughs> to be honest. But it Have sounds really cool, though. You've heard the version that slowed down, right? Half speed? That's basically what it is, yeah. It's but it's but we, so sick. Yeah, no, it, it, it turned out really well. And uh, I finished my guitars here doing that. So hopefully we can move forward with that soon. But that's yeah, pretty cool. I don't even know if I'm supposed to say that. But, but, I can uh, edit it out if you want me to. Yeah, baby. All right, I will. Um, I just ordered an ox. You know what that is? Oh, the uh, box top? Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was almost going to get one. How do you like it? Is it good? No, I, I mean, they're fucking sold out. I'm waiting. I'm back ordered, uh, right? Uh, so yeah, hoping, uh, hoping in the next week or two that it, it ships. Um, but I think that'll make things a lot easier. For me. Yeah, it looks amazing. It really does. And I bought a bunch of mics and shit, and they, then that came out. Right. And I was like, Fuck, man, that looks really cool. It looks like it just my kid could be sleeping, and I'm just like, <laughs> for <laughs> real, <laughs> dude. No, they yeah. sound amazing. I don't. Do you go? You're a gear guy. Do you go to Nam or go to any guitar shows or anything? Uh, I mean, I go to Nam when I'm asked to for like Reverend and shit. Yeah. I've only been to Nam twice. I went to, I think when this thing came out, one of these. Um, but yeah, I mean, I dig it. It's fucking crazy. What year did that come out? It's been years. This one, I think this one's like 2015, 16, maybe. Like there's different, they have different, um, different colors and shit. But I think the first one came out 2015. No, 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 fuck, yeah, 2014, sorry. Yeah, because we, we were playing at a Ryan Fest with Metallica in 2013, and, and I got those guys that kind of drove up their vodka or something. Yeah. And, like, ah, and they were like, we should do your, your guitar. And I was like, totally. <laughs> but I, I thought they were kidding. And I was like, yeah, that, that'd be fucking rad. And I, I thought I'd never hear about it again. But, uh, yeah, so it's probably 2014. That's sick. That's one of those things that, like, yeah, like I said, was one of the first things we talked about. It just is like, does it say your name up on the headstock? Yeah, it trips me the fuck out. I see it like <laughs> I come in here. It's so teach, sick, like, man. Yeah, it's on the it's on the pickups too. But yeah, I, I don't. I mean, I forget. You know, I'm like, fuck, that's my name. That's so weird. It's so weird. Is there any particular really? thing? Like, there's a thing that I do to all the guitars that I know I'm going to keep forever. Because you know, I have guitars come through pretty regularly right yeah. and i'm like oh okay here's a guitar and uh the thing that i do which is really dumb but it's it's kind of like when you set a, you know your clocks ahead and you're like oh i'm gonna put this one 15 minutes ahead so that i fucking be on time yeah. or whatever it's like the the dumbest thing you already know that it's 15 minutes ahead uh i sat in the necks on guitars right, yeah. that that I know I'm going to keep. Like if, if I'm like connected to a guitar, I'll sat in the neck and then it's devalued. Right. I mean, you could buff it out, but <laughs> it's devalued to a point where I couldn't sell it for what it's worth. So just can't be just scrape it. fucking anarchy signs all over it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and scri scribble Aussie into it. Yeah. And uh, eat fuck. Eat fuck. <laughs> Uh, is there any any weird thing that you do to your guitars? Like no, like, I mean these, these are these are fucking out of the box. They're rad, so I don't really do anything to them. I don't know. I just change strings and fucking try to keep them in shape. But I mean, other other than the first one, that yeah, I, that I you know, carved up. Nah, I don't really do anything weird. No, no. Uh, you don't have like a specific tuner that you have to have on all your nah, that's all pretty standard no weird shit, you know. 
No, the Reverend. I worked oh, no, at keep, a guitar. I'll keep, I'll keep some of them in like different tunings and shit. Right. For, for teaching and different string gauges and things like that. But yeah, no, it's it's all pretty. Fun, the uh, the Reverends came on my radar. Uh, you know, wait, I don't know. I feel like late nineties is what I, I. It's how I remember it. Could have been two thousand, but it's been a long time. Yeah. And uh, and they were that other weird sort of like hollow fiberglass body. I haven't seen any of the early ones. They were yeah. crazy and, and kind of cool and definitely very mid-century, you know, mid-century vibes. Yeah. You know, they had like chrome bumpers. They felt like like rock and roll diner pieces, you know? <laughs> yeah, um, Naylor, like, his amps were pretty rad, too. He did Naylor amps for a long time. I think that was before Reverend. Right. No, dude's got some ideas. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, but I, rad, uh, rad company. I was teaching at a guitar store, and they picked up the Reverend line, and uh, they, yeah, they, they fucked me up. They blew me away. So you're stoked. You're and you're in good company. That roster is killer. I'm gonna restring like three other ones today. <laughs> Get really weird with them. You've got your work cut out for you. Yeah. Uh what so you got Fu Manchu, Big Scenic Nowhere, Teaching. What other you got any other shit going on? Um, I haven't done it in a while, but I, I did a two records uh called Sun and Sail Club. With Scott Reader from Fu Manchu and Scott Reader from Kaya's. So there's two Scott Reader. <laughs> funny to like, kind of get those two in a room and fucking, like, airplane. Scott Reader, Scott Reader. What's your vector, Victor? And fucking, yeah, we jammed out those two records. One has the singer uh, from the Adolescents, Tony Adolescent, on it. Uh, Rad. The other, one is, the other one is me doing all the stuff on a vocoder, which is a pretty trippy record. Um, I haven't done anything regarding that in like four years or something. But yeah, that teaching, playing this riff, and then just surfing and hanging out with the kid and the wife and just staring at the trees in my backyard and trying to do as little as possible on the weekends. You know? That doesn't sound so bad. Yeah, yeah. Was your wife working full time before everything hit? Yeah, she still does. Then it's starting to get a little bit more normal. But yeah, she works from home. And I was working at the lesson studio, but I work from home now too. So. I can't complain. I mean, I'm fucking stoked to be working. You know? No, it's a good life. Yeah. That's a good life. Did you say you guys have a kid? Yeah. yeah How old's your year, kid? Five-year-old five year boy named Hunter. Uh, has he shown an interest in music? Um, I, The other day I walked into his room and he has Alexa in there. and He, he had Alexa playing the um, theme song to Halloween. Rad. And, he, and he's doing it on on the, on the keyboard too and and just by himself and i was like not really like trying to do it it wasn't yeah, really yeah. but i was like tripping out like dude that's creepy i, I don't know what to think about that <laughs> but i haven't really yeah I, I didn't really get into it too serious until i was like 12 but yeah i mean he's, he's in here poking at pedals and turning knobs and shit all day so you know, that's a good sign uh but your old man didn't play music did he he was kind of a crooner at, you know, at, at weddings and shit. And he was good. He oh, was really? like the Sinatra type dude, you know. Oh, um, rad. But he didn't. He didn't pursue that or anything. It was just, good. but he was good at it. Like he would, he would sing at fucking weddings, and everyone would be like, "Jesus Christ, dude! It sounds like Sinatra." But my grandfather was like a touring musician. He played sax in like a big band or something, which I didn't even know until I cleaned out my garage like a week ago. I <laughs> found all this shit. And I was like, what? There's like newspaper clippings and stuff from, from I think he was in a trio too that did some touring. Really? Yeah, which I had no I had no clue. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. Uh I'm gonna turn this thing off because maybe that's I don't know what's going on with this never used to be uh yeah, ninety episodes and without any freezes and then the last two I've had these freezes. It's on, on the weekend or some shit. I don't know. Could I mean? And it's through all the COVID and everything. Everyone's home streaming Netflix. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, I mean, it's not like we're in a densely, there are like 20 houses in this whole town. <laughs> and I, I'm probably not exaggerating. I mean, there's... Where do you live? Stuyvesant, New York. It's near Hudson. Do you know where Hudson is? Yeah. You know where Albany is. I'm about 35 or 40 minutes south of Albany okay. on the east side of the Hudson River. Uh, yeah. It's beautiful up here, but it's like, uh, you know, it's farm country. And uh, it's it's America here. It's not like, um, you know, a lot of my friends have a lot of a lot of different ideas about a lot of different things and and um uh, i don't know i think they you learn about living in harmony out here because if there are 20 houses and four different opinions yeah. then uh there's a, it's you just get on you got to get on it's like it's a lot like the town i grew up in actually um, you know, there's a, there's a Krishna community in this town. Huh. There's, and they're fucking rad. Actually, a bunch of them came from the, like the Krishna core, the New York Krishna core scene. Uh-huh. And, um, that label equal vision. Do you know this label? Yeah, I it's- I've seen the, I can see the logo in my head right now. I've seen it. On yeah, that label started a hundred yards away from my house. Oh, yeah, which is sick. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, it's crazy. Like, there's those folks. There's farmers. You know, there's like a there's a half a dozen Trump flags. There's a half a dozen Black Lives Matter signs. It's just like, it's a pretty full, relatively full representation of the entire country <laughs> you guys you know? give any mexican food there at all you know not nowhere that i've been and you've been all over this country you've been all over this great nation bob you know that well, mexican food in san diego is like pretty hard to beat i think it's the best yeah. it it's untoppable what is the place where you get the especial burrito just up the hill from the um the fucking club where we always Casbah. Play. Just up the hill from the Casbah. It's one of these places. It's in one of those stucco like buildings with the covered patio that you can sit on in the in the parking yeah, lot no, I, of a stop and go. I've been there. I can't, I can't really uh, remember the name. I've only been there though. It's not Nacho Libre. But the bur- the especial burrito is essentially a giant tortilla with cheese all over it, then a tortilla on top of that. So it's a quesadilla with a burrito rolled up in it. <laughs> I'm pretty hungry. No, it's, it would fuck you up. And so we would roll into town um, when I played with Alien. Did you know um, the Mises? No. Well, I was in the, uh, the singer from the Mises started a band called Alien Crime Syndicate. And so me and Jeff from Loaded were both in that band as well. And uh, Joe just had all these sneaky little routines from years of touring, band touring. He just knew all the little spots. So we would go there and, uh, you know, right when we got to town, we'd get two burritos each. So we'd eat one straight away. We'd have one for later. And then after the show, Sometimes we'd grab one and ice box it so that we'd have it for the next day. Because it's nice. just like the best, really the best. And that surf and turf place too, um, where you could grill your own grill your own meat. It's like an old school place that had a grill that, inside. Is that in the same area? Huh? Is that in the same area? No, I don't remember where that place was. Um but it's real dark inside, old, very old school. Um, I don't know. I like San Diego. Yeah, I dig it here. I moved here, like, right when King of the Road came out. I found an apartment, just threw all my shit in it, and then went on tour for like a 
months. But uh, been loving it ever since. Yeah. It's fucking cool. Are you? Uh, I see the the breeze uh, pushing your hair around. Are you near the water? <laughs> That's just ever since I talked about Billy John Roth. Yeah, it just. <laughs> no, um, I'm actually in my garage and it's hot as balls, so those are fans. Oh, but so you're yeah, a we, fan. Yeah, we live like, I don't know, like a five, ten minute drive to the water. Oh, that's not so bad? No, no. Get, I mean, getting in there in the summers, it takes a little longer, but yeah, it, it's pretty close. Can Closer you get than, there on a bicycle? No, not from where I'm at now. When, when I moved down here, I, I moved to like the beach where you could like walk to the beach. Right. But it like got a little, little gnarly down by where I was living. Like, it was fun in my 30s because we were just, like, getting up to no good. And, and I don't remember grocery shopping for, like, 10 years. Like, I think we just <laughs> ate at bars and shit. My wife and I were like, what did we do for that whole 10 years? Like, we didn't cook. We just drank and, like, walked to bars. You could walk to go surf, and it was fun. But it got a little much, and so we moved in when, when we got older. We moved a were you down in, like, Mission Beach or Pacific Beach or something? I, I lived in Pacific Beach... Um, when I right when I turned 21, yeah. and so I was like, yeah, and then that lasted maybe six months. I'm like, all right, get the fuck out of here, <laughs> right? Because it's it, it wasn't really my scene. But then I moved to Ocean Beach. I lived there for like 10 years, and that that area was pretty rad. Um, but yeah, I mean, we were talking about having a kid and shit, and kind of slowing down that lifestyle a little bit. Right. But I still go to OB and, and look around, especially during you know to get a good gauge of what society's up to around here just to drive around and be like, are people out? Like, are people out doing shit? And yeah, it's, it seems people, people around here are kind of respectful, I guess. I see masks and stuff. But, uh, it's, but, um, yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of people have a lot of different ideas about what it means to wear a mask. I just, I wear a mask when I go out and when I'm around people because uh, I'm not a medical expert. And... <laughs> You know, I don't fucking, I don't know. Like, that's not my, that's not my world. I don't know about diseases. Yeah, no, I mean, it's just, why just, just fucking do it and get it over with. The limitation of my knowledge is that I don't want to get sick. I know that much. And um, yeah. I think that, you know, I don't know. I would rather be wrong about wearing one, you know? Cause there's, there's, I have nothing to lose in that. Yeah, yeah. I, I just don't. So it's like fucking. I'm surrounded by amps and guitars. I'm not leaving. And when right. I go surf, it's it's usually. I mean, I'm by myself, obviously. So I don't, I don't know, man. I, What's your surf spot? Um, well, I live closest to um, like Blacks Scripps Pier area, but Blacks is kind of a hike to get to. So like Scripps Pier, but. Sunset Cliffs and, and Ocean Beach is like my shit. I like that a lot. Uh, Have you surfed your whole life? Uh, no, I started pretty late. I started when I was like 17 or 18. Um, yeah, there's a there's like a left that breaks underneath Ocean Beach Pier that's my favorite spot because it, it looks like it's kind of hairy to go through the pier and people don't really want to do that, but it, it's, it's like super wide. So once right. you do it, you're like, it's nothing. And it kind of cuts back on the crowd a little bit. You ever come? <laughs> but, you ever come close? Yeah, I've hit it. <laughs> yeah, you just hit it. yeah, I mean, I, just, only only one time, but yeah, I hit it one time. My board got wrapped around it, and I had to like figure it out. But um, yeah, th those spots are pretty good. That's amazing. Well, <laughs> how? I mean, how fast do you think you're going? I mean, did you? You got out of the way of the pole. Yeah, I, I mean, I hit the pole, but it, it was probably along the same lines as just falling off the skateboard, you know. Right. Like, hit like that, and, but you're in the, up in the pole, you're in the water, so that's that's good. It doesn't yeah. happen very often. I got a little, I got a little cocky, you know. I was like, oh, I don't need to, I don't need a bunch of time to make my line to get through it. I just went straight into it, and just ran into it. I'm like, all right, I, I, I was cocky. That was my bad. I won't do that. Anyone see you? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, because there's a lot of people on the pier that fish and everything. And, right. So, yeah, but that, I mean, that was one time out of what, like 20 years. Right. I mean, I have had like some weird stuff happen here in La Jolla. Looking back now, I'm like, maybe I overreacted, but I was on a wave and, and something hit me from below and like broke my board in half 
Because if your board breaks, like usually it's because the wave hit it on the top and it'll break downward. And, or like your your weight will do it. Like it broke upward, which was weird. And I mean, I'm, I don't know how that would happen, but it broke upward. I got thrown. And then like my leash was being tugged in, in like the opposite direction of where the water was headed. Like it was getting tugged towards the south. Oh, no. I was, like, I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, I had to like grab it and pull it. And then I got it. And then I was like, it like dawned on me. I was like, wait, what the fuck just happened? And my board's two pieces. And I start just panicking. And I'm like fucking trying to put it back together and sit on it and just falling apart. And, and it, I had gotten up really early that day. It was like maybe 530. I'm like, I'll be the first one in the water, you know, on a Saturday and start my day off right. And the sun's just coming up and I'm the only one out there. And I'm like, fucking, why did I get up early? I should have slept in, man. I was tired. And, and, uh, just I just laid there and waited to fucking die, and nothing happened for like thirty seconds. So I just made a swim for it. I made it in, and I was like, it was really sketchy. And I, I don't, I wouldn't. It wasn't a reef or anything. I don't know what I hit, or it could have been a dolphin just fucking around. But there's a lot of seals right there. It could have been a seal, but I did not know. And I, I remember just coming home and fucking staring at my board in the garage and like examining it, and like it started to like way pretty heavy on me. I was like, what the fuck was it? And I contacted a guy in Long Beach, like a shark expert who teaches at some college up there. And he's like, send me the pictures. And he's like, if it was a shark, it, you would feel like sandpaper, like scraped it because their skin's really rough. And I right. didn't feel like shit. He's like, he's like, yeah, it's hard to say. I don't think it was a shark because you would feel that. But for like three days, I didn't know. You know, I was just like, that was the heaviest. How many days oh. before you got back in the water? I went... <laughs> I called the lifeguards and I'm like, so I was there this morning. Something knocked me off my board. I just want to make you guys aware of it because I think we're going to be there all day. And I'm like, what do you suggest I do? And the guy's like, fucking get back out there, dude. <laughs> and I, was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, all right. And then I was going on tour to Europe in like five days. And my wife was like, God bless her, but now I'm thinking about it. Like, that was kind of early. She's like, Look, I'll go with you. We'll take Hunter. You have to go paddle back out somewhere else, but you got to paddle back out to get this out of your system because you're going to go to Europe and trip out on it for like a month. Right. You know? And so I went back out at, in, in Del Mar, which is, you know, a couple miles up the road. And I'm sitting there, and this dude paddles up next to me with no arm and a huge, like, scar, like, on the side. And I was just like, oh, What the Jesus. fuck? What the fuck? So I don't know what hit me or what the fuck happened, but yeah, that was that was fucking gnarly. That's fucked up. It was pretty scary, you know. And you know, my friends are like making fun of me, like, dude, you fucking thought you got a shark. Like, what is a shark gonna want with you? And I'm like, I don't know, but whatever it was, it flipped me out. Did they and, say what is a shark gonna want with you? <laughs> yeah, well, because it's like, oh, it's gotta be you. Like, that'd be so lunch. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> And then, you know what, though? A fucking month later, and you could look this shit up, a month later, a girl got her her ear bitten off, like, up at San Onofre, and then that whole summer in Orange County, which is, I mean, it's far away, it's like 60 minutes, but still, the 60-minute drive, um, there was like 30 great whites in the water every day, and that's never happened in my lifetime. And you I've been in the water a lot in. right there because I was in the Marine Corps. Oh, okay. And okay. so... That's okay. I was right there. I was, yeah. I was in at Pendleton and uh, Camp Del Mar, which is right there at what the fuck is that little town? That is um, what is the town that borders the main the main gate there? In the the gate. Oh, Oceanside. Is it Oceanside? Well, yeah. When you're going through, it's like San Clemente, and then and then you go through, and then it's like Camp Pendleton, and then it's Oceanside. Yeah. Oceanside, and then uh, yeah, and then there's a fancier town south of that where there's a mall. We used to go there and and get taken advantage of a lot. We spend all our money on some bullshit that we didn't need. Yeah. <laughs> hey, sign up for you. You need a a great stereo in the barracks. Like, oh yeah, no, you're probably right. They would always have like really oh, right. attractive girls as the sales. Like it was a very well oiled machine they had running there. Yeah. Even in in the clothing stores, the girls would go into the dressing room and dress you. Weird. Which is, and uh, got to imagine that they're uh, making commission. Yeah. I never 
wanted to have anyone come in. Like, I can dress myself, thank you. Like, I'm here to buy clothes. I'm not trying to have a make-believe girlfriend. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they'll they'll take advantage of you down there. What is that called? What is that town? It starts with a C. Ka- Carlsbad? Carlsbad. We're putting the bad in Carlsbad, that fucking place. <laughs> but, yeah, Ocean... Oceanside, that place is a trip. I haven't been there in years, but uh, what a strange place. You could get in some trouble there for sure. And yeah, then the other... I haven't really hung out there too much. I'm gonna, I've surfed there a couple times, but I don't really know like the nightlife or anything. Well, you know, there's the Marines are... Oh, yeah, fucking... if you're right there. You guys have time to go out and do shit for sure. Marines are fucking. I don't know. If I wouldn't want to go hang out in a in a marine based town, the mar- young marines especially are such cocky fuckers. God, what a my, dad bunch was a, of... my dad was a DI for a long time. Is that right? Yeah, at um, fuck, what was it? Paris Valley. Paris Island. Paris no. Paris Island. There's Paris Island, and and then there's Hollywood. Is what they call San, M, MCRD San Diego. That's where I went. Uh, I think it was it was Paris Island, like a Paris thing, Island. But... Yeah. That's... Yeah, it was a DI there. Yeah. That's incredible. I, yeah. you know, every Marine kind of dreams about being a, a drill instructor, including myself. And I, I think that I would have been really good. Because in the few scenarios where I was a I was in charge of people, like I had a job or something, I was a super prick. I should <laughs> never be. I should never be the boss. Like I think I learned all the shitty games you can play with people and all the like motivating <laughs> things to try and make them get excited about working harder. Yeah. Yeah terrible i'm a prick i'm a shitty boss uh i think i'm probably better now but i was also i fired everyone you fired i did i fired everyone i could be the president i fired everyone (laughs) um it's fun firing people but it's it sucks getting fired unless you don't like your job then it's great it's a fucking relief I don't think I, I, I got fired from a I got fired from a video store when I was a kid, um, but that's it. I think that's the only time. And I didn't. I mean, I didn't wasn't relying on that income, so I really give a fuck. But that's a rad job to have as a teenager. Oh, working at a like a, a yeah, just sat there and watched, place? I watched, like, Yeah, I just watched the jerk all day and like rewound cassettes and fucking you know, rang people up. How fucking great is the jerk? How fucking great is Caddyshack. I mean, it's a pretty cliche at this point. I've it's got a been... pretty extensive, well, compared to some people, not really, but like collection of like 80s VHS things. Because I used to be able to go on Amazon and just buy them for like 50 cents. And right. just to have it arriving, I would be like, oh, rad, I've got, you know, fucking, <laughs> I'm looking at it all right, like a copy of Fletch coming for 50 cents. Right. And, and now, now everyone wants that shit. Like, like, now I got sp- I got a copy of Spies Like Us. <laughs> I don't have Spies Like Us, but Canadian I Bacon. I do have uh, the like the trilogy of like '80s sports, like action sports ones, like Thrashin, Rad, and North Shore. Have you ever seen any of those ones? No. Oh fuck, those are good. Those are really good. Rad and Rad, especially you should watch that one. It's just BMX. It was, I was gonna say it's a BMX movie, right? Yeah. 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 It's like. Full on eighty, like very eighties, and they're they're like, what's that chick who's getting arrested right now for getting her kids in the USC? Uh, McLaughlin, Lori. What? The chick that's in uh, that was in Full House, like the TV show Full House. That's that's like getting arrested or like going to trial for. Oh, for uh, like anyway, paying to have her kids. Yeah, I forgot her name, but she's in it. There's a pretty rad prom scene, like you know, eighties <laughs> high school prom scene when they're on their bikes at the prom, like spinning around on the handlebars and. Good. Oh, that's awesome. Were you a BMX kid? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I rode a, there was like this spot in our neighborhood called the Dips where it was like just giant hills that we would ride at and stuff. Right. Um, that's a distinctly yeah. California thing because all the, the 
the roadside canals and the, the irrigation ditches and stuff. Yeah, yeah, we, we had we had a good a good setup. Um, I think I had like a Diamondback, I had a Mongoose, I had a GT. I believe it was a GT, but yeah, the movie Rad, like that dude does a fucking flip, and <laughs> we're kids, we're just like that's like the ultimate. Well, you did an uh, interview with uh, with Adam Grimm from Satellite. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So he, he's he's commented before on mine. He's like, "Oh man, when that came out, if I could do that flip, it would be so fucking badass." Was he a gnarly BMXer? I, I wasn't aware of that until I, I posted some shit about Brad, and he commented about how he tried to do it when he was a kid. So he must have been pretty good to do a fucking flip, you know. I have a a very good friend of mine that I started another. Um, you'll enjoy this. Um, I have another podcast that I'm starting. And it's this one. I don't have to book guests. It's just me and this my buddy Jamie, who used yeah. to be a pro BMXer, and it's called Golden Shower of Hits, and named after the the album and song, and yeah. the song, of course, being a medley. And so we we post a survey every so often, just says, "Hey, what's your favorite album from each of the last six? decades and then you just get a slot you fill in 60s 70s 80s 90s blah 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 and then we just randomly pick an album that auto populates into this document for us and we review it it's an album review so one of the things that we do in homage to golden shower of hits is we cover a song off the album so we do these punk rock versions of you know whatever I'm not going to give up the gold right now, but we've done some, we've done classic folk songs. We did nineties hip hop. We've done everything in between. It's, it's pretty fun because it's fun for me because a lot of these albums are albums that I've been listening to since I was a kid, but I've never listened to them critically. I've just enjoyed them as a fan. Right. Jamie, we've done eight episodes now, maybe nine. We haven't posted any yet, but he's only heard of, I think, two of the records. No, oh, wow. Uh, or, or heard them. Maybe he's heard of them, but he never listened to them. Like, he, he's cared about, like, three, four bands in his life. He cares about Black Flag, Kiss, Prince, and Husker Du. And everything else is just kind of like, meh, it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good mix, it's a good mix. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's incredible. It's pretty. I'll send you the link. You should fill out the survey. It's fucking yeah, super easy. Yeah, yeah, do that. Do that. Uh, and then uh, you can you could uh, give it a listen and just curse us while we fucking get everything wrong. <laughs> it's definitely a conversation that should never be fact checked that we have. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, listen, ma'am, uh, I'm going to get downstairs cause it's late over here on the yeah. East coast. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that makes sense. Um, what do you think? Um, what do you think this will air? Uh, well, I might try and edit it and put it up tomorrow. Oh, killer. Right on. Um, I gotta go. The other thing, James, so I don't have to do any of the heavy lifting on my other podcasts. I've been doing everything the hard way because I teach myself. Yeah. The thing is, if you don't know how to do something and you teach yourself, you're a shitty teacher. So I've learned how to do things the wrong way. He taught me that, uh, you know, when you're editing a podcast, you can speed it up in logic. And edit it quicker? Yeah, man. It's fucking crazy. That's pretty funny. Yeah, it's a it's, uh, yeah, who was it? Who was gonna do that? I, I remember them talking about that on, I think it was on Howard Stern or something, where it was like, you could watch your favorite shows at like, you know, one point five speed just to fucking get it quicker and get more of your favorite shows. And I was like, that's insane. Like, who the fuck's doing that? It's this is the information age, man. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> we're all just like, I want that. I want that. I want this. No, seriously, it's like. Headline, okay, I know about that topic. Headline, okay, I know about that. You know, a picture of a product, I don't like it. Like, how do you, <laughs> you don't like it. You don't even know what it is. You yeah. thought it was a razor. It's a, <laughs> you know, it's a fucking 
radio. I'm not using that radio as a fucking razor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a fucking crazy world we live in. That's for sure. Well, right on, man. Yeah, let me know uh, when you get it edited down. And... Um, and, uh, and dude, let's fucking, let's knock that thing out of the park. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I'm going to turn this, I'm going to turn logic off real quick here.